but we can now take you to uh, Parliament now. Chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee, James Kluche Aveji, uh, has been asking Interpol to issue a red alert for the arrest of a former teacher of the Pantine Nursing and Midwifery School here in Accra. The said teacher, Madame Efia Nyakwa, is said to have been on steady leave whilst drawing salaries from the state. She failed to return after the education authorities who appeared before the committee explained that it has been difficult getting Madame Fia Nyakwa to refund the monies to the state here is the chairperson of the Public Accounts Committee, James Kluche Aveji. Now she had received an earned salary of 60000 and she paid 10000 Difference of, uh, it's like with, they say 59000 which means that even what, yeah, getting to 70,000. So, now, uh, madam, you have to contact the, um, the, the director of Interpol, provide the necessary information about her. I'm sure you know where she's living now, so that they can track her. If any relative, what's the name of the lady? Efia Nyakua. Efia Nyakua. And uh, who was a teacher? Was she a teacher? Yes, please. Who was a teacher at uh, Nursing and Midwifery Training College, Pantan, who left and earned over close to 70,000 Ghana cities salary that she knew that she wasn't entitled, yet she received the money. We are getting the director of Interpol to track her and get her so that Thank government can retrieve the money. Thank you. Sir. If any relative of her is listening to her to, to us, then they should make the effort and contact the school immediately and make the appropriate arrangement and pay the money. That is a directive of the committee. Yes, please. And Clark, take note of that. Well, that's uh, James Kluchevaji. Let's uh, take you to Parliament now. Kwesi Paka Wilson joins us uh, for more on this. Uh, Paka, so first of all, tell us what, what was the agreement between the institution and uh, Nyakwa, who has been sent abroad to study? Uh, we are learning was that while she is in school, she still would be paid, and when she's done with her master's program, she will return to the school and continue were the teaching. And so that was the expectation of the school. But over a year now, uh, since she finished her education, uh, she has failed to attend. And interestingly, we are still paying her, and she's still drawing the, the salary from the state. And that is something that the uh, committee were unhappy about, that in spite of the woman's failure to return, somebody should have written a letter to the Controller and Accountant General Department to block the salary. But as she speak, she continues to draw salary for some time now, and that is really a challenge uh, to the committee. So that has been a concern. But of course, the authorities indicated to the committee that they will ensure that they gave the Interpol issue the red alert uh, so that they can track Madame Ifia Nyakwa, uh, who has gone AWOL. I mean, she's nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. they can track her and receive the money for the state. Uh, well, Parker, we know that the chairperson of the Public Accounts uh, Committee, James kluche is upset over what he describes as the health minister's uh, continuous disregard for the committee. Uh, we'll come to you to hear his reasons, but first I want us to take a listen to the chairperson of the committee and we'll get more explanations from you on this. You need to come and speak to the responses that you submit to the committee. That is one. Uh, secondly, the committee is not happy about the attitude of the, the Minister for Health. Um, convey this to him, that the committee is not happy about his attitude. Since this committee started work, uh, not this committee, the previous committee started work in 2017 to 2020. And this committee started from 2021 to this year, he appeared before this committee only once. He was the chairman, the former chairman of this committee. He was the one who had been inviting people, and when people don't come, 
He did not take it lightly. Now he himself is doing exactly what he was against. So uh, we are going to report on that to the plenary. So Clark, take note that the, the Minister of Health doesn't respect this committee. You have a ministry who has a minister and two deputies. And none of them will appear before the committee. You have spent public money. Come and account for it. Your name appeared in the report of the Auditor General, which means that there's something wrong. Come and tell us how you resolve the issue. You don't respect the committee. They invite you. You do other things. It's not nice. So we are going to report on that to the plenary for plenary to take decision. So convey this to him. We're not doing this job for fans. We have the backing of the Constitution. We have the backing of the Standing Orders of Parliament. We report our work to the House for the House to take decision. So please, we're not happy about that. Well, Paka Wilson is still on the telephone lines uh, with us. Uh, Paka, interestingly, the health minister once chaired this very committee that we are talking about. Chairman of the Public Accounts Committee. And for viewers or those who've been following the Public Accounts Committee, they do especially with the Auditor General report. And so they were expected that as a former chairman of the committee, he would submit himself to the processes so that with all the infractions cited in the Auditor General's report for the year 2018, he would make himself available to answer some of the questions. Because today, the Health Ministry was programmed uh, for conversations today on the, on, on the report. And as a minister, you have to be there to assess heads of the agencies and departments to answer the various questions uh, that the committee uh, has for them, including all the infections that have been cited in the Auditor General report. And we're talking about the 2018 report, the issues about Pantai, the issues about Kalebu, the issues about safety, nursing, and training. And the Health Minister, Kukaj Amenu, they wanted to show up. And that is a source of worry for the committee, indicating that it has become his conduct, it has become his behavior to disrespect the committee members. And so for that reason, the committee is going to report the conduct of the health minister to the plenary. And so when he called before the plenary, then he answers question on why continuously he disregards the invitation by the, the, the public accounts committee. So we are yet to get to know when the health minister will be called before the plenary for him to come and answer those questions. But as I speak, neither the health minister nor his two deputies are at the public accounts committee. Um, we'll keep our eyes on that. Paka Wilson there, live from Parliament. Remember that you're still live with us here on the polls. But, but blessed, before I go, in a closely related development, mm. uh, the ranking member on the Health Committee, Health Committee, Kobram Minta uh, Akando, has been addressing the media a short while ago. He's raising concerns about the COVID expenditure. You call that last week we had an extensive conversation with the country director of World Bank, and he disclosed to us that about $560 million were given as financial support to the government to fight COVID-19. Out of that, $170 million was used for the procurement of vaccines, while the $430 million was used to educate and sensitize people on the pandemic. Well, Akanda says that the $130 million has been accounted for in the 2021 budget. However, the $430 million hasn't been accounted for. So he's asking the minister to make available details of that expenses and also impression upon the House to constitute a bipartisan committee to investigate expenditure on COVID. So this is a story we'll be following. I'm sure I'll be getting some reaction from uh, the majority side mm. on the health committee to understand uh, what really is happening with the covered expenses. But he is clear in his mind that government may have the supply, the financial support received from the Bank of Ghana to... Uh, well, Pak, I, th I thought that... Uh, the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Uh, well, Paka, I thought that would have been the last, uh, but let, let me just uh, do one more. Uh, it appears that the road minister as well, uh, there are some issues happening in Parliament regarding that. What more can you tell us, Paka? Well, that's correct. You called that yesterday. I mean, social media was, was awash with a comment from the road minister that the abandoned tow boats will be converted into urinals, uh, washrooms. I mean, Ghanaians have been talking about this on social media. Today, on the floor of the house, uh, the matter came before the house. In fact, the house was considering a commercial agreement uh, between the bank of uh, uh, government and uh, a company to build a bridge over the Afram River. And the ranking member on the committee, Kwame Abuja, when he was contributing to the, the conversation, indicated that government is going to borrow 200 million euros for the construction of that bridge. And he, has, he doesn't understand why we've abandoned the tow boat. We could have made some money out of the tow boat and assist or support government with this project. And he's hearing the minister saying he's going to convert them into urinals. In fact, the minister was super upset with the conduct, indicating that he's been misreported. He never said that, and that the, 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 the ranking member that is coming Abuja is being ignorant about what he's talking about. That really brought the House into some kind of disagreement where the minority chief web, Munta Kamubarak, raised the objection that mm. you cannot use words like ignorant in the plenary. And so the first deputy speaker, who is presiding over citizens, was forced to compel the roads minister to withdraw. So he withdrew and apologized, but insisted that he never said anything about converting the abandoned tow boot into jury mm. house. Uh, he's still in the chamber. In fact, I, I, I am seeking to get some conversation with him to really understand what happened between him and uh, the National Road Safety Commission when he met. Because there are audios and videos to the fact that the minister had made the comment, but he is claiming that he didn't say that. So that was a disagreement on the floor of the House earlier today. And I must add that uh, Parliament has been lamenting about the continuous road carnages or road mm. accidents in, in the country. Uh, ye yesterday, we understand that there was some accident at, in Sawam, which claimed about five lives. Right. The MP for the area, Frank Arnold Dombre, wrote a statement on that. And almost all the members of the House who contributed to the statement were upset about the level at which roads are claiming lives in this country. They are asking the government to do something about it. And also uh, uh, persuading or admonishing drivers to comply with the road acts and the road regulation so that we can save lives and ensure that mm. Ghanaians continue to live longer and the government or on work for the government in order to generate revenue. Uh, I can imagine all that's uh, happening in Parliament now w with regard to that latest announcement by the uh, roads uh, minister. But Paka, we want to thank you at this point. Uh, we'll get more details from you in our subsequent bulletins. Uh, don't forget that's still to come. Today we're marking the Safer Internet Day, but how safe are you on the internet? Remember that this is The Pulse. We'll return shortly.